Betsy and I are out by Will Carlton, read for LibriVox.org by Tricia G. Draw up the papers, lawyer, and make em good and stout, for things at home are crossways, and Betsy and I are out. We who have worked together so long as man and wife must pull in single harness for the rest of our natural life. What is the matter, say you? I swan it's hard to tell. Most of the years behind us we've passed by very well. I have no other woman, she has no other man. Only we've lived together as long as we ever can. So I have talked with Betsy, and Betsy has talked with me, and so we've agreed together that we can't never agree. Not that we've catched each other in any terrible crime, we've been a-gathering this for years a little at a time. There was a stock of temper we both had for a start, although we never suspected t'would take us two apart. I had my various failings bred in the flesh and bone, and Betsy, like all good women, had a temper of her own. The only thing I remember whereon we disagreed was something concerning heaven, a difference in our creed. We arged the thing at breakfast, we arged the thing at tea, and the more we arged the question, the more we didn't agree. And the next that I remember was when we lost a cow. She had kicked the bucket for certain, the question was only how. I held my own opinion, and Betsy another had, and when we were done a-talkin', we both of us was mad. And the next that I remember, it started in a joke, but full for a week it lasted, and neither of us spoke. And the next was when I scolded because she broke a bowl, and she said I was mean and stingy and hadn't any soul. And so that bowl kept pourin' dissensions in our cup, and so that blamed cow critter was always a comin' up, and so that heaven we arg'd no nearer to us got, but it gave us a taste of somethin' a thousand times as hot. And so the thing kept workin', and all the self same way, always somethin' to arg and somethin' sharp to say, and down on us came the neighbors, a couple dozen strong, and lent their kindest service for to help the thing along. And there has been days together, and many a weary week, we was both of us cross and spunky, and both too proud to speak. And I have been thinkin' and thinkin' the whole of the winter and fall. If I can't live kind with a woman, why, then I won't at all. And so I have talked with Betsy, and Betsy has talked with me, and we have agreed together that we can't never agree. And what is hers shall be hers, and what is mine shall be mine, and I'll put it in the agreement and take it to her to sign. Write on the paper, lawyer, the very first paragraph, of all the farm and livestock that she shall have her half, for she has helped to earn it through many a weary day, and it's nothing more than justice that Betsy has her pay. Give her the house and homestead, a man can thrive and roam, but women are skeery creatures unless they have a home. And I have always determined and never failed to say that Bessie should never want a home if I was taken away. There is a little hard money that's drawn tolerable pay, a couple of hundred dollars laid by for a rainy day. Safe in the hands of good men and easy to get at. Put in another clause there and give her half of that. Yes, I see you smile, sir, at my given her so much. Yes, divorce is cheap, sir, but I take no stock in such. True and fair I married her when she was blithe and young, and Betsy was always good to me exceptin' with her tongue. Once, when I was young as you and not so smart, perhaps, for me she mittened a lawyer and several other chaps, and all of them was flustered and fairly taken down, and I for a time was counted the luckiest man in town. Once when I had a fever, I won't forget it soon, I was hot as a basted turkey and crazy as a loon. Never an hour went by me when she was out of sight. She nursed me true and tender and stuck to me day and night. And if ever a house was tidy and ever a kitchen clean, her house and kitchen was tidy as any I ever seen. And I don't complain of Betsy or any of her acts, exceptin' when we've quarreled and told each other facts. So draw up the paper, lawyer, and I'll go home to-night, and read the agreement to her, and see if it's all right. 
and then in the mornin' I'll sell to a tradin' man I know, and kiss the child that was left to us, and out in the world I'll go. And one thing put in the paper that first to me didn't occur, that when I am dead at last she'll bring me back to her, and lay me under the maples I planted years ago, when she and I was happy before we quarreled so. And when she dies I wish that she would be laid by me, and, lying together in silence, perhaps we will agree. And if ever we meet in heaven, I wouldn't think it queer, if we loved each other the better, because we quarreled here. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.